Hi everyone, welcome back. So in these four remaining parts in my 10-part reharmonization series, we are going to again continue with the song Hallelujah, which has served us so well with the, the previous six parts. So do, don't forget to watch part one and part two if you've stumbled on part three just like that through the YouTube gods. Uh, so uh, what we are going to do now is is we are going to look at a lot of changes to the chords to make it like really go out of the scale but yet sound very beautiful because it still upholds the strict traditions or laws of of uh, proper uh, classical and jazz music theory so the first concept i have for you is using secondary dominance and i'm not going to spend an uh, a long time on secondary dominance because i've spent detailed videos theoretically to train your ear and your theory and your piano with exercises on secondary dominance so all of this will be linked in the dis description you can watch that after this part uh, uh, as well so with secondary dominance just to talk about it in a nutshell what what a secondary dominant chord is basically where you're adding a 5 to the target chord you're adding the 5 off that target chord and the 5 is always a perfect fifth major chord perfect fifth major or dominant seventh chord if you can eat, you can do a major going to tonic or you can do a dominant which is a lot more stronger going to the tonic great way to visualize the fives going to ones is use the circle of fifths which is moving in clock in the counterclockwise direction so you have c g d a e b f sharp d flat a flat e flat b flat f c but that's clock right so when you're counting the dominant resolution to the tonic it's going to be c going to f which is counterclockwise f seventh going to b flat b flat seventh going to e flat e flat seventh going to a flat or a flat minor depending on what you want to resolve to a flat major dominant going to d flat major d flat going to f sharp f sharp going to b b going to e e going to a a going to d d going to g g back to c so you see the power of that dominant chord it just makes it work you can keep cycling through a variety of chords so a simple way to use this in a pop ballad song which probably will not have the chords ingrained in the actual song uh, hallelujah is an exception it has one secondary dominant that's why i thought this would be a great song for our lesson so you just proceed every one of the triads you're presented with or even a minor dominant seventh chord also with its perfect fifth dominant seventh chord okay so let me put that into context so i heard there was a secret chord now in between c major and a minor you actually play that secret chord as the composer is probably suggesting i heard there was a secret chord so i do like an e seventh there because e is the five of the a only challenge is the melody should not be compromised i heard there was a... so you may want to then alter that chord to, to make it an e7 sharp 9 because the vocal melody will be a g with respect to e that will be a sharp 9 over an e7 so just remember in some cases remember in this in this lesson we are doing all these techniques as an overkill we are pretty much doing it with every chord so you may not like the vibe of i heard there was a secret chord may not be at the beginning of the song so keep it simple in the beginning c major to a minor i heard there was a secret chord that david played and it pleased the lord that, I think it works there. That David played and it pleased the Lord. That David played and it pleased the Lord. So the secondary dominant chord, in this case, the five of the six, because it's the five of the six minor, A minor. 
it can motivate your melody to also go in different directions that day we play that's a e7 flat 9 if i do that embellishment that david played and it pleased the lord or that david played and it pleased the lord you can do that sharp 9 thing there played and it pleased the lord i sneaked in a c7 because c7 is going to go to the e f So that David played and it pleased the Lord. C7 going to F that you don't really care. You can even do that that you don't really care for me. Now the 5 of the 1 is g going to c so you don't have to do a dominant chord because g is already a 5 of the c so whenever you see a g going to c you don't have to bother doing much to the chord but then we also have a concept called tritone sub which i'll talk about shortly in this series itself that you don't really that's a d7 care for music do ya nothing needed here and it goes like this the fourth the fifth the that's an e seventh as always going to the a minor the major lift f uh, lift d7 going to g king composing and the composer has already put in a secondary dominant there composing e7 going to a minor c hallelujah oh hallelujah ha c7 going to hallelujah f hallelujah oh oh yeah oh yeah that's anyways a 5 going to 1 which we call in music theory as the authentic cadence right so that was how you use secondary dominance to embellish the song moving forward we are just going to add one more simple thing into this circular movement instead of doing the 5 going to 1 we'll do the 2 going to the 5 going to the 1 so what that means is it's still the cyclic progression in the circle of fifths or the cycle of fourths which is counter clockwise circle of fifths so you're moving in fourths but instead of doing something like luya haleluya you can kind of instead of doing c to f you can do Hallelujah Hallelujah I quite like that so when you see uh, I guess I'll show you with one segment of the song or a couple we'll do it from the Baffle King composing Baffle King composing Hallelujah oh, Hallelujah what did I do there Now my target chord is F major. It's very important when you're doing these two five fillers. Your target is F major, so you ask yourself, what is the two five one or the two five of the of F of the F chord or the key of F, not the two five of the C scale, which is this scale. The two five of C would be D going to G going to C, which you can also do by the way if it's not there in in the form. Uh, but in this instance, my target chord is F. The Baffle King composing Hallelujah. Now I want to go to F. So, what's the two five one of F? G minor C the 2 is always minor 2 minor 5 dominant going to the 1 major you can even do 2 dominant as well it just doesn't sound as colorful or as strong as the 2 minor going to the 5 7 going to the land of 1 major <laughs> let's do that again the baffle king composing Okay and you may also getting be getting my drift 
in the usage or the placement of where I would use two fives. So whenever the chord duration is a bit longer, that's where you can start making it with this two five embellishment. So Baffle King composing hallelujah. Now again, F is played a bit longer. Hallelujah. So I can proceed that A minor with A minors 2, 5, 1. And here's the beauty of 2, 5s. When you're resolving to a minor chord, it's generally recommended to do a 2 minor 7 flat 5 or a half diminished chord res uh, resolving to the 5 of that scale and then it goes to the tonic. So what's the 2, 5 of uh, A minor? The minor 2, 5 will be B half diminished or B minor 7 flat 5. Oh! Especially when you want to be on core minor, if you want that minor vibe. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Do that again. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You don't want to do hallelujah, hallelujah. It kind of works, the two minor... Normal minor 7 going to dominant to the 1 kind of works, but when you're ending, when you're la landing on a minor chord, I would say try out the 2 half diminished going to the 5 dominant latching on to minor. Because that gives you an entire harmonic minor scale which will be used in that embellishment if you choose to. So let me just do Baffle King composing Hallelujah and that should be a good place to use this 2-5-1 passing movement. Okay? The Baffle King composing E7 secondary dominant to the A minor G C F composing Hallelujah G minor C F major Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now you could do a two five one in your parent key, which is C major. Hallelujah. <clears throat> now you could do that whole Nora Jones gospelish ending. Hallelujah. Squeeze in like an A minor D G C. Don't know why I didn't come. There we go. That progression, very Nora Jones like, very gospel. So let's just do that whole thing again using the two five one build ups. The baffle king composing hallelujah. was about twoing the five and then fiving the one as some people call it. Let's move on to the last two reharmonization techniques which I have for you. Right, so another way you can kind of strategize uh, uh, your ha harmony or reharmonization is to basically take a chord like maybe uh, a C major chord and ask yourself what other chords in the C major scale have pretty much the same notes as C major. So if you take C major, you'll find that an A minor chord has everything C major has except that A. So in other words, a C, ma C major chord could just be substituted with an A minor. Which is anyway what the composer is doing. He's toggling between C major and A minor which gives you a very rooted effect because they are both what we call as tonic chords. Tonic chords will have the 1, 3 and 5 of the scale in them which which is C major for sure. C, E and G. I heard there was or I heard there was. So if you want to start 
the song on a minor chord like an A minor 7th why not i heard there was a secret chord why not uh, you could also substitute c major with another triad which has pretty much all the c major notes in it what is that that's the e minor and to wash out the sound or to make the sound more you know washy as i call it uh, you can make it a seventh extension so don't just play an e minor you can play an e minor seventh don't just play an a minor to substitute c major play an a minor seventh because then you will end up obviously playing the c major notes and only the bass will be felt by the audience and the mood of the chord will change but yet it will just perfectly work with the melody so i heard there was okay let's just see how we can fit this i heard there was a secret chord that david played now there that david played there i would use an e minor 7th possibly using this technique that david played and it pleased the lord you could replace a minor with c major you know now moving on that you don't really care for music do ya now this is interesting you could also think of reharmonizing with your relative minor so that's a quick trick that you don't really replace f major with its relative minor chord which is d minor that you don't really works wash it with the the seventh you don't really d minor 7 g major what's its relative minor e minor that you don't really care for music do ya or do ya that you don't really care for music do ya so i'm replacing all the major chords there with all their minor relatives no you don't really care for music A minor. Okay. Da 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 na 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 na. The David played and it pleased the Lord. Now, substituting that you don't really care for music, do ya? And when you ex, when you play the substitutes, you don't really care for music, do ya? You can extend that with a minor seventh. with their ninths then you don't really care for me sick to okay so that's basically the concept of uh, common what, what i'm calling as common tone chords Co- other chords which share common notes at least two with the parent triad and there we go you can substitute that and see how it goes always see how it goes with the way you want to project the song because it's a cover you're changing the cover without annihilating it so you have to see what works best for you okay i like to leave you with one final tip which is a little bit more chaotic or what some people call as advanced we call it tritone substitution and then i'd also like to sneak in some diminished chord usage let's move forward right so with tritone substitutions what you tend to do is if you find a dominant chord in the song what you do is or what you have the opportunity or the possibility of doing is you could play that dominant chord a tritone away so let's say a good moment for using it would be now you don't really care for music do ya sounds a bit too a uh, normal or folk like so but you don't really care for music do ya so that made it very weird so uh, but yet it kind of worked didn't it so that you don't really care for music do you so first of all g is a dominant chord so if you're substituting with a tritone the chord has to be a dominant 7 that's a 1 3 5 7 flat so now you can substitute it with a tritone what's a tritone of g or the tritone of pretty much anything it's a perfect fifth minus 1 or perfect fourth 
plus 1 so g is tritone is d flat i suggest you remember these core intervals tritones perfect fourths perfect fifths very important when you're visualizing and reharmonizing so if you do you don't really care for music so now you replace the g seventh chord with a d flat seventh chord or a c sharp dominant seventh chord okay you don't really care for me now here's the thing now sounds a bit unstable with the melody you it works perfectly with the melody without the melody right it works it's like also the jailhouse rock song uh, chord progression which elvis uses so how do we make this work you don't really care for me you could kind of alter some of those notes you don't really care for music you could re remove that a flat and play a g you don't really I think that works well. You don't really care for music, do you? I quite like that. If you do the original, uh, you don't really care for music, do you? Normal. You don't really care for music, do you? A bit too sudden. So you don't really care for music. So what did I do there? It's a D flat seventh chord with a flat five. Why did I flatten the five so that I can bring in a G? Care for you, which is in the melody. Do ya? Goes on. So that's where you could, I guess, add a tritone sub. And another nice thing you can also add. Uh, especially when you precede a minor chord is you could add a diminished seventh chord so diminished seventh let's say you want to use it before any old a minor there are a lot of a minors in this song right hallelujah hallelujah okay so what did i do there hallelujah that's a diminished chord So diminished chord is just a stack of minor thirds, or a diminished chord with a diminished seventh. We've done a video on diminished chords. Do check that out for the proper detail of it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So that diminished chord would also work if you want something a little bit more serious. Hallelujah. Hallelujah Let's see if it can precede the tonic Hallelujah Hallelujah It works perfectly there Ooh because it's almost like a G7 flat 9 which is a dominant going to the tonic You're not playing the G, but you could play the G. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Oh Hallelujah. So that a G sharp diminished seventh is also the same as B diminished seventh, D diminished seventh, F diminished seventh. It's a very easy chord. Come to think of it. So at the last re substitution stages, I've talked about tritone substitution, and now using diminished chords. Okay, so let's just summarize all the different techniques which we've used to reharmonize the song Hallelujah, which can then be used for pretty much any song you're working on, right, guys? So we first in the part one, if you remember, don't forget to watch part one. We looked at adding, add to. Sus four, add six, and so on and so forth. Then we could suspend it. Then we looked at extension chords, uh, which are basically the jazzy things like sevens. 
skipping, playing another triad and forming a sophisticated ninth or eleventh. Then we also looked at passing slash chords, which are major chords with a different note, different bass note. Like for example, na 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 lo you da da, very brave sound as we found out. And then in part two, we looked at our plagal cadence. in john like very gospel like then we also looked at using borrowed chords where you could end the song hallelujah hallelujah in this discussion we talked about borrowing borrowing from the minor scale then we also looked at these climb ups and climb downs with respect to uh, the bass note It goes like this the fourth the fifth the minor fourth and the major lift things like that then in this particular series we started with our usage of secondary dominant chords which are fives going to ones then we expanded on that by doing two fives going to ones twoing the five and fiving the one then we looked at finding other chords which share notes in common with the current chord you're dealing with and last but not least we looked at a few advanced jazz techniques which are basically tritone re, uh, substitution uh, which is substituting the dominant just works primarily on the five chord or the dominant chord and we looked at basic and then we looked at diminished chords which also kind of substitute the fives if you think about it right guys so that was a lot packaged into one lesson series these were three parts uh, make sure you watch the videos again if you have any doubts and uh, look at the links where i've shared relevant topics which you can branch off into uh, there are videos on secondary dominance using popular songs so i've tried to explain all of this all of these chapters either using something i've composed or using a song you will definitely know so do stay tuned to our youtube channel for regular updates and it makes more sense to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell for regular notifications so you don't miss a single lesson and another thing you can do to supplement your learning and support our channel at the same time is head over to patreon.com and follow follow us and support us for a subscription a monthly subscription where you get a ton of stuff and the learning resources like midis my handwritten notes staff notation whenever possible and so on and so forth and if you'd like to learn this in a very structured manner in a course manner with assignments feedback and all that by yours truly you can head over to nathanielschool.com fill up a form or give us a call on our whatsapp numbers or send us an email or whatever you find convenient thanks a ton for watching our series catch you in the next one